This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another video quick tip. Today's video, I'm gonna show you guys a really cool feature in the new After Effects version 16.1 update, the spring 2019 update that was released earlier this month in April. I haven't had a chance to do a video over it, but I think this feature is really cool and very helpful enough to where it deserves its own video. And it's basically content aware from Photoshop brought into After Effects. And so now you can use it in your moving projects. And this is awesome because it will make your life a lot easier as a VFX guy. Um, it's very helpful for kind of like quick things, uh, kind of rough things, um, you know, non-professional stuff. But I think it's very, very handy. And I think it's a, it's a great step in a direction. It's, I'm glad to see this kind of feature in Photoshop brought over to After Effects. So basically, um, if you're not aware with uh, about what content aware fill is, basically it pretty much makes your life easier when you need to do a clean plate. Um, and pretty much is kind of like generating material from nothing, basically. Um, so here's how it works. So here in After Effects, to access the Content Aware Fill panel, we have to go into Window and bring up the Content Aware Fill right over here. And this will bring up the Content Aware Fill window here. So now I have this footage here. Um, it's a simple move, it's a very, very easy track. Um, so I think we can get away without tracking it. But basically, um, how would we remove this annoying boat right here? Normally you would have to paint this out and track that clean plate you know, over this footage. Um, but now with the content where Phil, it can actually use the current video data right here, or image data and actually generate, uh, you know, footage in this spot right here to cover this up without manually having to brush it and, you know, paint it out and stuff like that. So it just kind of saves you an extra step um, if it's a very simple case. So let's say I wanted to remove this boat here. What I need to do is I need to somehow isolate it and cut it out. So basically the content where I feel works by using transparency data um, to know kind of where you're targeting here. So you don't have to use mass. You can actually use track mass. You can pretty much use anything that generates alpha. You just need to pre-compose it. So make sure that you have some sort of alpha on this footage. In this case, I'm going to cut the bow out using a pen tool to generate the alpha, um, but you can generate alpha, you know, however you want and use any kind of complicated method you want. So I'm going to, you know, cut out this little boat here just like that. I'm going to go in to uh, change the mask to none and I'm going to hit um, bring down the mask here and just bring up the mask path and I'm going to, you know, roughly track this thing in just manually here. I mean, you could track it using Mocha, you could track it using the tracker, the mask tracker or whatever, but I think this is, this is like a four keyframe job here. And I might kind of expand it a little bit too because we have kind of like a reflection right here. And, you know, just like this. So just make sure that your mask is, you know, following what you want. And then once you change the, the track from none to subtract, you can see that we are creating this alpha here. So basically the tracker needs alpha to know where you're trying to slice things up and generate new content here. So I want to slice up this area and I want to fill it with something. Um, preferably water in this case. So once we have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and select our footage here and go ahead and change. So you have the alpha expansion, which pretty much expands your mass. So we have this little cutout area here, as you can see the preview right here. If you crank this up to like 10, you're gonna see that it kind of just opens up the, um, the alpha a little bit up, kind of like expanding the mask. Um, I find that you know, cranking this up to like two, three, four usually works pretty well. Um, I don't usually leave it to zero. Um, I just find that it works better with some sort of alpha expansion to kind of get more data to kind of analyze and fill in. And then we have some fill methods. Now, these are not very, very technical um, in terms of what I know, but object, again, pretty self-explanatory. If you're trying to remove an object, like a, you know, a light pole or a car or a person or, you know, something like that. Surface is better for things like removing things off signs, walls, roads, you know, like, you know, signage and stuff like that, where you're trying to, you know, content aware fill like a background or something. So I think maybe surface would work better in this case, because we're not really removing, you know, standalone object. It kind of acts like kind of a, a water surface right here. So I'm going to try surface and we're going to set the duration to the whole entire work area here. And then just like that, we can go ahead and generate fill. It's gonna require that you save your project before things go to hell. And basically it kind of is like warp stabilizer, right? It's going to analyze your footage and you know, it analyzes pretty fast. 
Um, it's going to analyze your footage frame by frame, and it's going to take a little while to render the results out. Um, and I find that it kind of works like warp stabilizer in a sense where when it works, it really works, you know, decently well. And if not, it looks like crap and it's going to jitter and look kind of funky and, you know, um, but you know, that, that is to be expected. Warp stabilizer, uh, warp stabilizer was really bad, um, early on. It got a lot better. And this is the first iteration of content aware fill in after effects. So it's only going to get better from here. So, um, you know, you know, just keep that in mind that this is kind of a new feature and that you're not going to get amazing results um, depending on how, how complex it is. So as you can see, it just finished analyzing my clip and it created this fill layer right here. It's an EXR, uh, pretty much an image sequence. And it's going to generate, you know, ocean content to overlay on top. And right now it's rendering 13 out of 150 here. So it's still in the process of generating new frames for the rest of the sequence here. So I'm going to pause the video um, and kind of just skip forward so you can kind of see the end result here. And so just like that, it generated a kind of an overlay layer. And if I solo this newly generated um, image sequence, you can see kind of what it created. It created this kind of um, kind of like ocean piece right here. And kind of filled in the areas that we kind of masked out and it's going to be overlaid on top of our footage like this. And you can kind of see what we're doing here. So basically, you're not going to see that little ship anymore. Um, but as you can see, it's not exactly perfect. So it, it looks good on some frames, like right here. Um, and then the shading gets kind of thrown off. And you can kind of see the edges a little bit right here. And this can kind of be improved if maybe you can try feathering the edges, maybe masking more precisely, maybe changing the fill method here. So what I can do to improve this is I can actually go ahead and disable everything here and go ahead and disable my mask um, just so, we, so we can get our raw footage here. And there's a feature called create reference frame. So basically, if the algorithm is not really working the way it, you want it to, you can actually select a layer and click create reference frame. And what's going to do is going to open up Photoshop and pretty much ask you to create a reference frame. So basically, it's saying, hey, I don't know what you want. I don't want. I don't know what you want me to do, but I'm gonna need some more help. And so basically, you have to create a reference frame or provide a reference frame for After Effects to kind of know um, what you're kind of looking for here. So you can pretty much create a reference frame however you want, whatever method you want. Um, you can even use a content where a fill feature in um, in Photoshop to kind of get the look that you want. Um, and then bring that over to After Effects. Um, that would be kind of funny. Um, but basically, I'm doing a pretty bad job here, um, just kind of painting this out. And I guess I can kind of figure out why, um, you know, the software is kind of having trouble here because the water shading gradient is kind of uh, kind of a little weird. Um, but basically, I'm just going to paint that out real quick just to kind of tell it what to do. I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. And once it's saved, you can go back into After Effects. And it's going to create this kind of reference frame here um, in After Effects. And then you can regenerate the fill layer. And it's pretty much going to reanalyze everything and try to do a better job um, trying to clean this up using your reference frame as kind of an example. So this is just a really, really quick, brief overview um, on the content where I fill, just kind of introduce you guys and make you guys aware of, you know, that it exists in After Effects now. So if you haven't updated, go ahead and update. This is a worthwhile update. It can kind of save your butt in certain situations where you're just kind of running out of time and you need some rough, some rough roto stuff being done, um, stuff like this. So pretty cool stuff. Before I head out, I want to give a quick thanks for our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have tons of things to choose from, professionally designed and crafted. You can actually customize the site to make it the way you want it to look like without any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24-hour support. And best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So this is just a kind of brief overview over the content where it feels. It's a really cool feature. Um, you can actually take it one step further. So if you had like a more complicated scene, something like this, and you wanted to track stuff, you know, you can easily just create a mask like this and, you know, use the, the mass tracker in After Effects and just kind of, um, you know, analyze forward and it's going to track the mask here. You can set it to subtract and, you know, use content where I feel that way. 
Um, so you can really see the After Effects is starting to get a little bit more automated now. And so some of the tedious stuff that you had to do in the past, like roto brushing, um, very easy stuff. You know, the roto brush can do it on its own now. We have content where fail to help you kind of create clean plates. So things are getting a lot easier now, and I kind of like that. Um, but yeah, you can use something like this, like the mass track to kind of create really fast, quick um, tracks of stuff and, you know, generate a, um, you know, a content where failed this way. Um, again, I would use surface on this on this particular shot here. But yeah, this is the new content where fill for After Effects 16.1. Go ahead and update now um, through Creative Cloud. So check it out. My name is Vincent Nguyen from the Creative Dojo and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.